Hello and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover, and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. We are going to protect some routes today, and in the process, we need to load some data, and so I'm going to cover that in a little bit more detail. I previously have covered how to create an authentication application that uses JSON web tokens uh, to log in and authenticate a user. But in that example, all we did is some conditional rendering. So if I log in, it moves us to the home page. And then it pings the back end, uh, authenticates that the user really is who they say they are. And then we're just dis displaying some different text depending on if they're logged in or not. But you can in fact access the home page whether or not you are logged in or not. It's just different messaging. So to take this example a bit further, let's make this a protected route. Before we cover that, I wanna talk about the different load functions because we're gonna to need to load some data in order to do that. So in routes, let's make uh, two new files, a plus page.js and a plus layout.js. And what we want to do here is export function load like that. And then every load function needs to return an object. So let's return an object with one property called data. And we'll just say from layout, save that. And then we'll copy and paste this into our plus page.js. And then let's just change this to from page. Give that a save. Now, in order to access that data in our, in our plus page dots felt, we need to come in here and just do the one little thing and that is export let data. And now we have this built-in data property that we can use anywhere in this dots felt and these are also available in all child pages and all child layouts. So let's, inside this on mount, let's do a console.log uh, data and see what we have in there. So in our console, you can see here is that object, but wait, didn't I just say that all of them are available? So shouldn't we be seeing the one from layout? Well, these all happen simultaneously. However, the layout runs slightly before the plus page. And anytime you're returning one with the same exact property names, the last one to run is the one that takes precedence. So if I change the one in layout to uh, change the property name to from layout and save that then in our console.log we can see we have two properties on the data object we have the data from layout and the data from page now another little difference here between these two is where they run in order to demonstrate that let's go ahead and delete the plus layout and inside of the page what we're going to do is let's take from the plus page .svelte, Let's copy all of this out, cut it out, and then put it in here. Now, I wanna point out before we move any further, there's a little gotcha here. Anytime you're loading data and you're calling with a fetch inside of plus page, plus page.server and the layout and layout.servers, you have to, inside these brackets here, pass along the SvelteKit version of, of fetch. In this regular client-side version, it's not going to make a difference uh, because it's going to be running on the client as well. But in the .server version, if you don't put that in there, then it won't pass along the cookies. So we have to add in that fetch. Everything else there is the same. And then let's just cut, or not cut, copy and paste that here. So we're going to return an object with one property. That is the return data. And then last modification here, let's make this an async function so that we can await those items. And we need to remove that console.log out there. And if we save that, and inside of our plus page.svelte, we need to update this check here to be data.returnData. And the place where we're updating the store with the user, we need to update that to have the data in front of it as well, since we need to access that built-in data prop. We go ahead and save that. And now here you can see there's our returned data. But what I want to point out here is in the network tab, 
if I move to sign in and then move to home, you can see that there is this call happening here from the client. And we know it's happening from the client because we can see it here in the browser. The browser is aware of that call. And that is because we're using a plus page.js. If we change this, so let's just rename this to plus page.server. And then refresh. You can see that uh, there is no call happening here on the client anymore. It's only happening on the server. So that's the difference between the uh, the plus page and plus layout.js files, those load functions that run there, and the load functions that run in the uh, dot server versions of them. The ones with the without the dot server run both server side and client side, and the ones with the dot server will only ever run on the server side. They'll never run in the client. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, in order to make this an actual protected route, there's very little that we need to change here, actually. Right here below this returned data, let's make a little if statement and say if returned data.error equals true. And remember when we did the authentication application, we have a standard object that we're returning from our back end. It has a success. A property, an error property, a message, and then a data property as well. So we're checking the error property to see if our backend is erroring out. And if so, then we're going to throw redirect like this. And we want to throw it to 303 and then whatever the route is you want to push that person to. And then uh, my IDE was nice and so it pulled it in. If yours does try to do this, make sure it's importing redirect with a lowercase r. There is another one. Let me just show you guys. There's another one with an uppercase right here, and that's actually the type. We don't want the type. We want the actual function. So make sure that's the lowercase r. And let's give that a save. And now if I try to go to the home page, uh, I can't get there at all it automatically pushes me back. As soon as I try to go there, it's not gonna let me go because I'm not signed in. If I sign in, uh, then you can see that we make it there just fine. So that is how we protect a route. I will also point out that inside of our load, if we were wanting to protect uh, nested routes, so let's say you had uh, some sort of hierarchy where you had uh, nested pages, nested routes in that, the way that you would have to deal with that in that situation would be have an additional plus page.server load function for each child. And then here you just pass in parent and then you just do a wait parent like this. And what this is going to do, as I was saying earlier, uh, all of these load functions happen pretty much simultaneously apart from the layouts happen just ever so slightly before the page versions. And because they happen simultaneously, if you try to do this uh, without having the parent, what will happen is essentially the same thing that happens if you try to use the hooks.server, and that is on the initial request, the initial load, it will in fact work. But then once the page is rendered, all the navigation is happening client side, and so uh, you'd just be able to move over here unauthenticated. So the first time that this rendered, it'd be like, hey, they're not they're not authenticated. It would push you to the sign-in page. Uh, but as soon as this loaded, you could just move over. And here you can see that that's not the case. We want to make sure that we're doing this await parent. The other thing that's handy is if you needed to do something with the data from the parent load, you can actually do this, const, and then whatever whatever you're destructuring out of that like this, so let's say you returned a property called A. You could destructure out that property by doing from the parent load function by doing this, const, and then destructure out A, and then add some sort of conditional stuff inside of your load function based off of what the parent load function is returning. So that's helpful as well. I will cover the hooks. Uh, I've seen some tutorials on using the hooks.server to uh, protect your routes. However, as I pointed out, there is a big flaw with that, and that is hooks.server.js is triggered. The documentation says upon every request, that's only partially true. And I'll, in another video, I'll explain what's going on, and I'll also link to a GitHub issue where they say it's only the case if 
inside of your load function, you are hitting an endpoint or pulling some sort of data. So this is how you should protect your routes according to Svelte's own contributors. So this is the way that you should be doing it. Uh, don't I would not rely on the hooks.server in order to do that. So there you have it. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a like and thumbs up. My channel would certainly appreciate the support. And as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.